Hello and welcome to the Story Pilgrim. Boston, Memorial Day and the Freedom Trail. Now if you find yourself moved, inspired or even just a little curious about these journeys, these discoveries and the stories, please hit that follow button, rate and review the podcast. Your support helps me bring these powerful journeys to more listeners. Share the podcast with friends, family, and anyone who loves a good story. Let's keep this spirit of exploration and storytelling alive together. A Boston, home to revolutionary history, Fenway Park, and the best clam chowder. It all awaits. Let's dive in. It is May the 27th, 2024. It is my mum's birthday. I won't mention how old she is, but happy birthday, mum. Just had a little chat to her. And in England, it is bank holiday Monday, the second one in May. Should spread them out a little bit more, shouldn't they? Stick one in November. And... um, here in America. It's Memorial Day. Memorial Day, typically a day for Americans, just running across the street here, to visit cemeteries and memorials um, for the uh, the military personnel who have died in, in line of duty. Uh, they typically We'll take the American flag uh, and place it on the graves of uh, like the military personnel in, in like the national cemeteries and stuff. And it's also regarded as um, the the first day of summer, or like the unofficial beginning of summer. Uh, it was first recognised. It's, it's always the the last Monday of May. I think the first one they did was in 1868. And they called it Decoration Day. Um, and it's changed as the years have gone on. But, uh, you know, interesting that, you know, 1868. And where am I? Well, you already know because you title of the episode and stuff. And I've sort of talked about it in the, in the voiceover. I'm in Boston. I'm here to pack the car. Uh, that's about as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. It's really, uh, it's it's a lovely town, Boston. Haley, my cousin, it's one of her favourite places to visit. There's so much history for America here, and it's very mixed with the buildings and very modern buildings. And then there's the um, older buildings dating back. Uh, to the 1800s. Uh, for instance, I'm just walking past one here, Sanders Castle. But a lot of them also, they're kind of like what the Brighton Pavilion is with regards to um, the chinoiserie, the fake Chinese kind of thing. Whereas it's kind of not fake, but it's kind of like, you know, these European settlers that came over and they had a certain way of building stuff. And uh, so, you know, you get that feeling uh, of, like, a Gothic architecture in some things. But it's also kind of not quite right. But uh, thinking about a theme, I don't really uh, know if this is a theme... But you uh, may or may not have read a recent blog, blog, can't speak today, a recent blog post of mine, um, which was sort of prompted by the announcement of the general election this year. We knew it was going to happen, just the actual date of it, in the UK, July the 4th. Here I am in America on the Independence Day. Um... And obviously America is going to have a presidential election, same thing, the end of this year. Um, 
but that sort of kind of prompted my thoughts about, you know, whenever I have voted in the past, uh, I've never voted, never ended up voting for the person that gets in. I've always voted for the, the, com- the, the party that I believe fits closest to my desires, my beliefs of how society should be ran, how we, we could have fairness. Um, and I've never actually voted to someone who actually got in. So, you know, you could say, well, most of my life I've lived underneath uh, a country, countries being ruled uh, in a way that I don't 100% agree with. Would that ever happen? Probably not. It's really hard to get a full democracy or a full system where everybody's going to be happy isn't it um, so we sort of could kind of want to just bounce around what is that you know what, what, what how do we deal with that you know, what does that mean you know that here I am now living in England who is cons- currently under conservatives um, leadership I was going to say rule that's not right um, I didn't vote. I didn't vote men. I didn't want them there, you know. And I pretty much know who's going to get in. We pretty much all know who's going to get in the next time round. And I ain't going to be voting for them. So, you know, you then go. Well, what's the point of voting? No, absolutely have to vote anyway. Kind of. Let's just play around that. What does that mean? So I just walked up into. I'm I'm in the park next to Boston Common. So there's a park next to it which has like a lagoon in it with uh, people out on the lagoon in um, swan boats. And the boats have got swans. And there's a there's a guy sat at the back just pedalling away. Um, that must be like that must be a real workout. But it's got uh, lovely willow trees all the way around this little lagoon and I love a willow tree I think I might have mentioned second favourite tree um, of mine so there's loads of loads of them Um, but yeah with it being Memorial Day you've got a lot of people out and about theme well kind of but we'll come back to that Now, I've been to Boston a couple of times, but I have never walked the iconic Freedom Trail. So that was the plan. Head off on a grey day, taking a walk along a big part of America's history. But first, this. So walking up to the common, or I'm on the common now. And there's an area here of uh, American flags put out in in front of uh, a war memorial and it's just there's a lot of flags there it's huge, I'll take a picture so there are just over 37,000 flags here planted on the common here to represent Every brave Massachusetts service member who gave their life defending our nation since the Revolutionary War. So you start off the Freedom Trail in the Boston Common, which is the old, America's oldest public park. The Puritans put it there. We know about the Puritans, don't we? Um, from uh, Drury Lane. 
And you walk up and the first thing you come to is the Massachusetts State House designed by Charles Bullfinch. It's the new and current State House has served as the seat of the Massachusetts government since its opening in 1798. Americans say that they don't have history. You do, it's right there, look. It holds the legislative and executive branches and it's adjacent to the uh, site of the Hancock Mansion, which is just on the corner there. And then there's a lovely um, memorial uh, opposite it here for for the veterans. Of a gentleman on his horse and people marching with their muskets over their back. This is the, the Shaw 54th Regiment Memorial, the outstanding tribute to soldiers of the Civil War, was created by one of America's foremost sculptors, Augustus St. Gaudens, 1848 to 1907. Born in Dublin, of a French father and an Irish mother. Grew up in New York and was apprenticed to a cameo cutter at the age of 13. It's a really quite impressive sculpture. As you may know, I love to walk and have followed a few trails in my time. No different today. I'm already delving into the soul of Boston, taking it all in. The Freedom Trail, however... The Freedom Trail is just a line of two bricks and in the, in the floor, but it's very easy for you to be walking along and looking up at the buildings forget that you're supposed to be following a trail which is on the floor and uh, it's just been a couple of times like oh that looks cool and uh, and then I've realized I'm not on the trail anymore all right Boston's old city hall is right here it's really really cool little things around the old city hall um, now I've got Ruth's Chris uh, steakhouse in it Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. That didn't sound right. But it is. gentleman just uh, just telling all lies it's just all lies um that's why when i take the tours at drury lane i say you know most of the things if you ask me any questions uh you'll find that most of my answers are just going to be made up so uh i just won't tell you which ones right we're in quite the uh well the old corner book store and uh, that is uh, one of the oldest commercial buildings in in Boston. Yep. yep. 1718, that one. It's just going to be a boring history tour, is it? And maybe I should just stop and get something to eat. That might make it a bit more interesting. Chicken and rice. Chipotle. Just a thought with regards to what I said about the theme of, like... Um, Voting and feeling like your voice isn't put forward. That's actually quite apt when you think about it. What what, what happened here in Boston with regards to the you know you know taxation without representation and the hopes uh, for all of that. Um, you know, and you talk about you know living in. Do we live in a democracy? Is it an oligarchy? You know, you can have that whole debate about 
politicians getting into politics for the best reasons, uh, every great intentions, and uh, you know it doesn't kind of you know they seem to always kind of end up getting a little bit corrupted in a way or losing their focus um, just because of the just just because of the way it all works it's really it's really interesting there I think there's a I mean it's all very personal how you feel about that which is great that's the way it should be but it is interesting being here you know this place that is so significant in America and history and what it is today and I think they do we all I think most places most countries do try their best for the the best interests of the people um, I mean obviously there's you can debate that as well but uh, so on March the 5th 1770 after a few months of tension um, due to occupation and taxation Bostonians and Redcoats clashed in the streets of Boston and that ended with five civilians uh, being killed by gunfire that was Crispus Attox, Samuel Gray James Caldwell, Samuel Maverick and Patrick Carr and that led to the rallying of the Bostonians against the Crown and the evacuation of the troops in Boston and they would not be returning for about another four years, 1774 when they came back and that happened in this area and it's, it's known as the Boston Massacre site It's always interesting when you come to areas which are associated with death and people standing up for what they believed in um, really sort of makes you kind of stop and think because that's all we've got isn't it at the end of the day we've only got this one life as far as I'm aware and uh, to give it up for something that you are passionate about um, but also uh, the fact that that's it then you've given it up you've, you're dead um, you don't know what's happening after that you, you don't know if you've made any difference you personally the person that has died the people after you are the ones who are responsible for that and um, what what happens with that so it's really yeah it makes it's kind of yeah kind of a little bit of a weird one just off the trail here um, by Marsh Lane there's a, a Holocaust Holocaust um, memorial sculpture it's a series of shafts that look like lift shafts um, um, they're glass um, panes and on them are the numbers are the be aware that the um, the Nazis uh, would tattoo um, Jewish um, prisoners with the number and they got all the numbers on all of these shafts I think there's five of them it's five or six as you walk through, I think I think these are each. Uh, the, this is right. These are each of the concentration camps. So this is Belzec. So some quotes here: uh, "Nothing belongs to us anymore. They've taken away our clothes, our shoes, even our hair. If we speak, they will not listen to us. And if they listen, they will not understand. They have even taken away our names. My number is." 174517 I will carry the tattoo on my left arm until I die it's Primo Levy but the, um, the underneath this is Auschwitz this grids um, and there's just steam coming up which is really quite poignant as um 
as it's uh, symbolizing the, the chambers. You stand inside and it's just looking straight up. The nice thing with this is the steam just goes away. Didn't really happen for them, did it? Wow, what a powerful piece of art. You call it that. It is an art piece of art, but it's such a powerful one. It's Treblinka. That memorial was unexpected. It struck me to the core. Standing there, surrounded by those numbers, those people, the steam rising, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of sadness and reverence. It's at moments like these that remind us of the importance of empathy and remembrance. There's a burial ground here, Copps Hill burial ground. Several burial grounds you walk past on the Freedom Trail. This is, uh, if I remember rightly, this is all about uh, the uh, tradesmen and industrialists and everything are in this one. can get close to that, I don't know where that cannon is. You see the harbour, so it's obviously down in the harbour somewhere. Can't see where the gun is, but I'm going to stick on the, on the Freedom Trail, which is really interesting. Um, there we are ground, Cops Hill. And it has a, when I go back up to it here, there's a gravestone with a skull and cross bones on it at the top. Let's see if we can find it again. Here he is. I don't know if it has... I uh, don't know if I can read that. Nathaniel Brown. Um, born November 30th, 1761. Alright, we are uh, heading over Charles River now to go to the other side. So we're going to leave that part of Boston, the Boston Common and all the stuff. I've just taken a little like sidestep off the Freedom Trail in this area and there's some just really delightful houses and streets are all quite compact but they're really cute little window boxes and they're like wooden slats as a facade different colors yellow gray blue green it's really cute reflecting again about life really and, and what I'm thinking about today with regards to my part, our part in a election, our part in doing what we do, like, you know, does it matter that we make a difference? I think that's what we put on ourselves, isn't it? I really do overthink things way too much. And uh, I need to figure out how to sort of tone that down a bit. I saw something on social media the other day that said it had like things like, if you're an overthinker, then you should write. If you are lazy, you should read. I can't remember. I think that was what that one was. There's all these different ones of like, if you have these type of uh, if you're anxious you should exercise 
because I thought it was like it was a nice little diagram. Obviously, I didn't take a picture of it, and I didn't. I have no more reference to it than that. I'm sure if I did a little search, I'd be able to find it. I am a huge overthinker. Help! I guess being aware of it is a good first step. I was thoroughly loving my walk along the Freedom Trail. By now, I'm in Charlestown when I came across an old ice cream truck owned by Mitch. Oh, I've had this truck for like 30 years. I grew up in the neighborhood. Right. I, got, I grew up right down. I got married. There's a Catholic church right at the end of the street. I got married right in that church. Yeah. That's my neighborhood, but I live in Florida in the winter. I'm not you as do, dumb as I look. Down. I'm not as dumb as I look. I get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No, it's, it's too cold. cold. Yeah, Boston gets cold. Man. Yeah. Well, I lived in Chicago for eight years. We get the same weather as Chicago two years, two days later. Crazy, isn't it? It gets, it is. The winters are just too too much. I don't blame you. you got to get out. you got to get out. Three years ago, we haven't had any snow for three years, but three years ago the snow was all the way up to that winter peak sign. Really? Yeah, after really? they plowed and shoveled and shit, the snow was all, was all, all the way up. They but we haven't had any snow for three years. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's time so to what kind of podcast do you normally do? Yeah. So are you familiar yeah. with Charlestown? Do you know the history of Charlestown? I don't really know much about Charlestown. Okay, do you ever see the movie The Town with Ben Affleck? Yes. The bank robbery movie? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're in the town. This is it. All my friends are bank robbers. <laughs> Every single one of them. I got a cousin. Because that's a true story. You know. Okay. But not only is it about this town, but 99% of the movie was filmed in this town, too. Right. So I have a cousin that lived up the street he just died six months ago okay and uh, he just he did 24 years in federal prison for Robin Banks for Robin Banks yeah yeah we're famous for our bank robbers that's what the, that's what that's what Charlestown's famous for our for, bank robbers it's, about, it's beautiful it's lovely is this like oh this is all typical this was all poor, poor Catholic it changed a lot we fought and drank every day and when we were done we fought and drank some more this was a rough neighborhood was it? it was all gangs really my gang was down the street yeah did if they, we come up here, we had to fight these kids. If we went up there, we had to fight those kids. This was a rough neighborhood. What was the names of the gangs? There was no name, just the street name. Just, okay. Street name. Like okay. my gang, but my street was Union Street, so we were the Union Street gang. This was the training field gang. Okay. The monument gang. Whatever street corner was, was the name of the gang. So, yeah, and it's changed a lot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There so. doesn't seem to be, it seems to be just, there's not many, like, bars and stuff and whatever. It's just there's a, there's a bar, there's, No, there's, there's about five bars in the town, actually. Is there? Yeah, there's yeah. a Warren Tavern right down the street. Okay. Which is the oldest tavern in the United States. It's right down the street, yeah. Right behind right. the church over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like George Washington and Paul Revere literally used to sit there and drink beer. That's how old the tavern is. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. So I'm down now by the USS Constitution... The oldest commissioned naval warship still afloat. It's got three masts. It's a wooden hull. You can see the cannons going all the way along it. There are 13? Well, 13 cannons showing out there. It looks like there's room for one more at the front. It's all closed up. Launched in 1797, six original frigates that were authorised for construction by the Naval Act of 1794. The name Constitution was among ten names submitted to President George Washington by the Secretary of War, Timothy Pickering. And basically, the first duties were just to protect, like, uh, American merchant shipping during the, the quasi-war with France and to defeat the, the pirates, uh, the Barbary pirates. It's a really, really cool little thing. And then there's a, a modern frigate opposite. Uh, I can't quite see what the name of it from here. It's 793. That is what will have uh, been making the noises. The fire that's got several guns on it. I'm kind of not sure how I feel about the e-bikes. I, I get it. You know, it's much easier. But it's kind of cheating, isn't it? It's like the point of a bike 
is the exercise or is the point of the bike for transportation to get you around so you know you see a lot of delivery drivers now with these e-bikes and they're just flying along so you go okay if it is for getting around then okay but exercise the other day we were driving out to Ditchling and you go over Ditchling Beacon and then you go down a very very steep hill and a lot of cyclists will cycle up that because uh, it's a good workout it's a really steep hill and there are these cyclists you know in all of their regalia um, making their way up the hill and then there was a, a guy also in all of his regalia on an e-bike just flying up the hill and you're like that kind of like defeats the point and he had a big smile on his face of course he did he was just flying up the hill all right there's a little cafe and bakery here i think i might just get myself a coffee and a cake Ooh. thinking about again what difference can you make it, there's so many factors that come into play that with regards to your upbringing your home your education the country that you live in having lived in a couple of different ones you you kind of do see there is a different mentality different cultures that influence just the way that you uh, are the way that you think you can be there's so many different factors it's really interesting isn't it? and that's what fascinates me about the individual way we are going through this life what difference can we make well that at the end of the day is down to us isn't it back to my walk it's drawing to a close freedom trail that was really really interesting very informative quite fun it's a very busy day with it being memorial day um, so you've got quite a lot of people wandering along it taking it in as they want to a little plaque here. Make some damn noise for this guy, yeah, yeah! Look at that crazy footwork. Everybody clap, clap. He's not done. He's full of it. He's rocking it. I love this part. Neck breaker. Give it up for the neck breaker, yeah, yeah! Represent for all the Asians all over the world. Make some damn noise for the Asian sensation, yeah! Everybody clap! He's about to cook it up. Let him cook! I said let him cook! Come on, wake it up, yeah! Put a little sauce on that. Make some damn noise, yeah, yeah! He's feeling it. Can someone please uh, explain to me what all the big deal is about Trader Joe's? I, uh, I don't get it. Like, people go crazy for it. Whether it's we believed honestly that the U.S. is a force for democracy and justice, we as veterans have a unique power in our voice to restrain our government from the killing of children. On this Memorial Day, as in any Memorial Day, I'm thinking about my friends who passed away in Iraq. I'm thinking about the victims of Iraq, folks whose country was invaded, who were trying to defend their homeland from foreign invaders, which seems an honorable pursuit to me. But I'm also thinking about all of the victims around the world of U.S. militarism. Very comforted to have my voice among all of yours today, so thank you. Members of Veterans for, De for Peace, remember America's war dead, not just once a year, but every day of our lives. 
with the solemnity they deserve, not the crass uh, commercialism that Memorial Day has become. We remember the war dead and the far greater number of wounded with missing limbs and the even greater li number living with invisible, lifelong devils and injuries in their heads. We remember the contributions they could have made to society that they literally bottled up or destroyed in the epidemic of suicide rampant among veterans. We remember the domestic violence caused by their devils. We remember the children whose lives were more painful and less joyful than they could have been because of those devils. We remember the way the pain echoes through the generations, refreshed by each new war. We remember how our communities and our nations nation are so much less than they should be because of this undes undeser underserved burden. What a special city. Special day, Memorial Day, a mix of emotions. The final words there from a veteran who was giving a talk at the Soldiers and Sailors Monument where the flags were on Boston Common. Just as the Freedom Trail guided me through the heart of Boston, let us all be guided by our own inner compasses, our values, our passions, our dreams. Let us all walk with purpose, with kindness, and with the courage to stand up for what is right. For it is in our actions, however small, that we shape the world around us. I hope that we can continue to walk our own paths, to tell our own stories, and to strive for a future where freedom, justice, and compassion reign supreme. Together, we can make a difference, one step at a time. The Story Pilgrim was written and recorded, walked and produced by me, Darren Hill. Anya Backer and Sean the Hart provided the stunning music. Please like, rate, review this episode. Review the podcast, please. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Search The Story Pilgrim. And sign up for our monthly newsletter on our website. Go to www.thestorypilgrim.com. You'll find it there on the front page. Have a look at our blog, too. Until the next time, keep listening and buen camino.